after dropping out of college from the Tamil Nadu city of Salem, he pursued his career in agriculture and now a chief laborer at Coop, chief laborer at Seed to Fruit, a person who is responsible for many water body restorations in the city of Salem, notably the Mukaneri Lake, which was moved into a bird sanctuary, a person behind turning the 180 acres of barren land into green pastures and now it blossoms with 4 lakh plus trees. And the title of this speaker was given to me, I was pretty emotional because there is someone for the first time who has come on such a big platform and saying that small is really beautiful. Please put your hands together. Drop down today, it's small, it's beautiful. Everything that I've seen till now is big. The hotel is big, the Omar is big, the toll roads are big. I don't know how can I, how I could fit in. We all think big. See, somehow, I feel that I'm a very honest person in life. I've been very hardworking. But somehow, honesty and hard work has never had respect. See, if I, if I drive a cycle and go to a hotel, no hotel allows us inside. <laughs> if I have a Hawaii slipper on my foot, go elsewhere, entry is prohibited in most of the places. I believe, I have always believed that money should actually earn me a lot of happiness, which I'm sure you, all of you believe here. Well, it does also. Not that I'm against it, but the problem with it is when we pursue money, it sort of enslaves us. It does not empower us. I want money to empower me. Looking at examples of housing, I am a movie buff myself. I, I watch a lot of movies. I saw one movie by Amir Khan in Kayamat Se Kayamat Tak. I must have been 6th standard, 7th standard at that time. He runs away with Jui Chawla to a forest. Inside the forest, there's this beautiful wooden hut. And there's a stream flowing by. Both of them dance in the hut and in the, stay in the wooden log. Nothing more romantic like this. So the first thing I thought was, the day I get a single penny in my hand, I will buy a forest. <laughs> so the, somehow, as soon as people start making money, they lose this dream. I saw the friend Tobit placed me in a flat here today. 45 lakhs for 876 square feet. Sort of, I was little surprised. How does this work? The economics doesn't calculate. You have so much money and you're cramping yourself. I've always seen villages. And villages, you have a lot of space there and you actually can live your dream as Amir Khan did. Now even giving an example such as Amir Khan is actually filthy here. Because that bugger went and advertised for Coca-Cola. So let me drop him now. Coming to every part of your life, every part of your life, like physic, we all want to be healthy. Don't we? We all want six packs. Don't we? I'm sort of, I'm sort of sacrificing, I've sacrificed my health for the people of Salem. Because I have a beautiful forest and all the people working in my forest are very healthy. I, we have 80 year old labor who lifts stone that Shivaji Ganeshan would have lifted, no? For that marriage. In the, in the Purna and the Kalena Panana took, no? Our 80 year old labor lifts it. And whenever we need something, he will just say yes. 10 minutes, give me 10 minutes. He'll cross two hills and come back. Now for me, when I was, as soon as I passed out, I didn't pass out, sorry. I was thrown out of the college. So <laughs> as soon as I came out, I wanted to do something. So I thought, what do we do? I finally decided I'll plant trees. So I went on a hill called Kandashram. So Kandashram, I went there, I said, I want to plant trees. I didn't do anything about it. Till 21, I've never set foot on a uh, field before. So when I went to plant trees, I sort of took a labor with me. His name was Osei. When I went up this hill with Osai, I had to sit for two times. Third time when I sat, I said, Osai, how old are you? He said, Nang Elu Vaisa. And he was having a gadapara in his hand, which actually weighed something. Then I said, you give me your gadapara and you get lost. From then, I started planting trees on these hills for almost, say, five years. I used to wake up at five o'clock, work till eight o'clock. And I had a very good physique. After marriage and activism, that's a different story. But then, till from 97 to 2002, I, I still really have this whole thing about my physique. I will attribute it to hard labor. The thing is very simple. 
Every agriculturist that you will see outside, every mason that you will see outside will be healthy. They don't talk about millets, they don't talk about porridge, they don't talk about wheat grass juice, they don't talk any of the shit. They are healthy because sunlight, water, air and soil touches them together. Now this is for the physics. Number two, let me come to businesses. We all need to aspire for money. For me when I look, my he's my friend Mr. Srinivasan from Mecheri. He works in a bank. He was mentioning to me that Jindal has got a loan of 35,000 crores outstanding on one plan which employs 7,000 people. So 5 five crores, this bugger has employed one employee for 5 crores. This seems to me, I'm, I'm bewildered. I, I don't know what to make of it. Tata has taken 10,000 crores to make this nano stupid car at 0.01% interest that has come from the pension fund fund. Vedanta, Malko, have you heard of Vedanta? Sesagova, Sterlite, Hindustan Zinc, Balko, Malko. He's the richest man in the world. He stays in the palace of Shah of Iran in London. He has chopped away my hills in Salem. Kohli Hills and Irkat Sharon Hills. Have you heard of Irkat? You will find Malko big balloon there inside the midst of the lake saying Malko. In Kohli Hills if you go all around his boats will be there. He's chopped off the hills and what this has done is five rivers are dead. So I ask this question to every Salemite. Name the five rivers that originate from Salem. I'm not talking that runs through Salem. Kaveri runs through Salem. Originates from Salem. Not a single person is able to give me this answer. Because we have forgotten them because the rivers don't run now. And if rivers run, civilizations will run with them. It's a huge string river running. And somehow because these are invisible things, it is not seen. But Omar is very visible. Your glitchy buildings are very visible. Our fashion is very visible. So this success does not mean anything. And the irony part of it is, it's not that because, see, it's none of a botheration that Vijay Malia could have able to loot the bags, run an airline, pose with his arrow stresses and then say, bye bye Tata, I'm not going to give you any money. That's none of my business. It is his ability to screw up this country. Problem is that, by giving them so much, by giving Ratan Tata the Munnar land for 40,000 acres, by giving Vedanta my hills away, by giving Dalmia to create a desert in midst of Salem for 28 square kilometers, while my city is only 30 square kilometers, by giving away dole outs at this level to these who have been looting this country every minute, I have been looted. I'll tell you how. For me as a tribal living in Kohli Hills, for me as a tribal living in Dantewada in Chhattisgarh, for me as a tribal living in Irkar, I am not able to bring one switch of grass which I grow on my land below without a permit for which I have to go to six offices. If, a, if my daughter dies of a snake bite and if I want, forget saving her life. If I want her money for a funeral, I will have to go to seek permission from the collector to cut down one single tree to prevent soil erosion. And when we ask, Sir, soil is going to He is bringing soil down. He says, Sir, you bring soil down. Don't make soil erosion. Because law is only for soil erosion. You can bring soil down yourself. It is a sad irony of this country that we youngsters have completely let out. We have allowed the biggest loot. I was reading a book by Maulana Abdul Kalam Azhar. The first election manifesto of the Congress party says the purpose is to safeguard the mineral wealth for public use of freedom. Because the whole idea about the British was he was looting our resources. And the richest resource is mineral resource. And you said you are not going to privatize it. And I remain, the, I remain still a mute spectator as this huge loot is going on. Now coming back to small is beautiful. For me, I have put 1 lakh rupees in a bamboo business. I am able to employ 20 people at it. Paying them fair wages at more than 8,000 rupees. Which for the rural side, rural countryside is much better than living in parasitical cities. Nuclear power plants are established at a cost of 16 crores per megawatt. And you cannot build a small power plant. You have to build a big power plant. Coal thermal fired power plants would take 6 crores per megawatt. You cannot build small power plant. I have a power plant in my farm. It was designed by a farmer who has never been to school. Please note down the name if you have pen, Rising Dhaya. Rising Dhaya has designed a power plant which runs on wood. The cost is 25,000 per kVA. And imagine rural sites, people running engines, generating power. And you know what happens when we generate power by these plants? We generate charcoal. When you burn coal dug from the mother earth and produce ash that is radioactive and waste a lot amount of water. Instead here, we produce charcoal which goes back to the soil. The technology is called biochar. James Lovelock, a scientist has claimed that until we don't add charcoal to the soil, we have no answer for carbon emissions. So if charcoal goes to the soil, it absorbs water. 60% of water, less is required for crops. Have you seen biogas plants? Have you seen biogas plants? My house has one. I add one kilo of vegetable waste to it and I generate three 
hours of cooking gas for free. Sago factories in Salem have set up biogas plants. They are able to make good profit by generating electricity from these biogas plants and their main businesses now is generating electricity rather than producing sago. So every sector, I'll ask this open question to the audience, I can challenge you, every sector that you name, we can prove that small is going to be sustainable, is going to be beautiful. While big is going to fall, it is going to have a mighty fall. We cannot have this lifestyle that we are living another for 15 years more. You are looking at a terrible tragedy. 60% of the youth today have a sperm count that is less than 25,000. Impotency is a big problem. Couples not getting children, you must have known a lot of people around you who do not are not able to give birth to children. This is plastics for you. This is other pollutants for you. The water that was served here, this water, you keep drinking from this, you're screwed for life. Sunlight passes through plastic, it leaks into water, goes inside, my stomach does not digest. May too, have you heard of May too? Metro Dam for which Tamil Nadu and Karnataka fights with each other? No. Every year Tamilians will get beaten up. Not the car guys. So you don't have to bother. The guys who are working in Bastis, the construction labor, they get beaten up every time. Like India, Sri Lanka, no? When Sri Lanka lost to India in a World Cup match, the Sri Lankan army shot down four Indian fishermen. Just for the heck of it. Pakistan doesn't do it, Sri Lanka does it. Same way, Karnataka, when water fight happens, Tamilians are bundled back to Dharmapuri, Krishnagiri, these districts. Migrant labor. Beaten up pulp and blue. And as soon as this water enters, Tamil Nadu, three companies, Kemplast, Malgo and Jindal drop water directly from the river with their pump houses. Drinking water that could serve the purpose of 13 lakh people. I'm not against his drawing water. I'm against his drawing water from his own pump house. The state should be giving him water to prioritize for the past 10 years, Karnataka has not released water. The overflow has come to Tamil Nadu. In the same way, Tamil Nadu has not released water for its own farmers. And the upland farmers are fighting with the further deep down farmers. There's a court cases in the Supreme Court. Sharima water. Over Sharima water, we have court cases going on between districts. Salem and Karur and Tirchi are loggerheads. I send my ditch water through a river called Tirumani Muttar. Tirumani Muttar, which is made a permanent ditch for 8 kilometers with a World Bank loan. Have you guys seen the movie called Quantum of Solace? Have you seen that movie? It's about Salem. It's not about Bolivia. World Bank gave us funds. And I'm the James Bond. <laughs> World Bank gave us funds. 20 years back. 20 years back, they gave us funds to cement a river for 8 kilometers. They cemented this river, then said, oh, your groundwater is gone. Okay, now we'll give you funds to bring water from Medu. And we'll give this water, take another load of something around 3 and 79 crores. But the only catch will be, private people will supply water. Now, why private people will supply water is because, just imagine, I controlling water, pharmaceutical company, you come to me, give me some little money, and I'll add the virus inside. <laughs> Makes sense, no? So big operations can have a big duty. So the state, the premise of this country, the constitution of this country, the way when it was built was on the premise that we will stand by the small. We will not stand by the big. But unfortunately, we stand completely. Maruti Suzuki workers, have you seen the trade union fight? Did you follow it up? No? No clue? There was a fight, there was a fire inside the plant, no clue about it. Manasa plant, the entire force of Haryana and UP police force went behind labor. Entire force was put. Six, for six days, they chased each and every migrant labor around, bought them back, put them in jails for a fire that was started by these companies. It is not about the fire, it is not about that. It is about the way my state, my country, my money is being used to grease your physique and the mind should be working for your soul. The physique asks for a lot of things. It wants to eat, you go and eat. It wants to sleep, we go and sleep. Isn't it? It wants comfort, we work for it. The mind seeks a lot of enlightenment. Enlightenment. We read a book, we feel happy. We get a new skill, we feel happy. What does your soul ask for? Can peace exist without justice? The absence of violence is 100% importance for non-violence to exist. So for contentment and peace, justice has to prevail. And every second your soul demands justice from you. Are you doing the right thing? Look, something bad is happening there. Come on, stop it. Then what stops us? The police will hit me. <laughs> the court will drag me. What will he say? Sharanya may feel I'm not a very cool guy. <laughs> it's not in fashion. Oh my, I need to impress. So suddenly the soul, no, dims, dims and dims. Your physique and your mind laps, laps, laps over it. And now we don't even realize where our soul is. Just listen to your soul. And its voice is very clear. Very clear. Thank you so much.